outside of RJ Broadway Barrett, my favorite Nick was one Alec Burks. Yes, Alec Burks, 12 points per game, four rebounds, two dimes, 41% from three. But the one thing about Burks, man, that that he showed us last year was that uh, he was Mr. Fourth Quarter, man. Alec Burks was Mr. Fourth Quarter so many times for this team. Um, I remember I was at the Kings game, Knicks versus Kings. He had 19 points in the fourth quarter against the Kings. The Pelicans game, 11 points against the Pelicans in the fourth quarter where no team could get a bucket, led the team, put the team on his back in New Orleans and got him a win against the Pelicans. Comes back from COVID against the Spurs, 16 points in the fourth quarter on his way to a season high, 30 points Alec Burks uh when when he was on he was on we saw that in very a lot of instances we even saw that uh briefly in the playoffs as well yep. I mean it did cool off a little bit but we saw it briefly so you know offensively we know that he's that guy especially where we're gonna need that juice off the bench um uh we, I think we talked about it a while ago last time I was on like we have that we we have the possibility of being able to start the game a lot better than we did last year and then be able to continue that with the second unit. And I think that is only, uh, uh, that's a, a big part of that is going to be Alec Burks offensively. But then I'm just looking at the defense. I'm just looking to see what, if Tom Thibodeau, because it's it, he's going to have a real conflict of interest if you if you really think about it, because if Q uh, starts off and he, you know, if the, even the shot's not hitting or whatever, we saw the defense. I know it's just summer league, but the defense looked like it translated pretty well. And if now we're seeing it against NBA players and it's, you know, game 22, game, uh, you know, 25, and he's still out here locking up some of the other team's better um, scorers, what what happens, you know? So I'm just very interested to see what happens with these rotations, look, knowing that we got these defensive guys on the bench and if Alec Burke's shot's not hitting, what happens next? I actually play? think he's going to maintain the similar stats that he did uh, mm. last season, just because okay. of the small sample size that he did when he was in Philadelphia for a 2019, 2020 season on fewer on was it like on an average of like six minutes less, he was averaging Ooh. around the same. So I think he could do it. If he's getting less of Evan, Evan Fournier is starting and getting close to that 30 minutes, you want to bring in um, Alec Burks and come in for the remainder of that, something close to 20 minutes or just like, so like, sh- not gonna be splitting hairs like down to the second, but like essentially, if he's getting twenty minutes at that point, I think he can keep up the twelve points. I think his rebounding is very good for like a shooting guard. He was averaging yeah. close to five rebounds per game, uh-huh. so definitely want to keep that. I could see him keeping that same impact. But to add on to what CK said, like yeah, like we saw Deuce McBride, especially with his defense in summer league. We don't know if he can translate that. We saw that what IQ can do. We know. I think the backcourt. I think the initial. I think the initial second unit is going to stay the same coming out of the gate. And I think it's going to stay the same yeah, because of too. how tone it was from last season. I mean, having mm-hmm. Derek Rose, Emmanuel quickly, Alec Burks, Obi Toppin, and then you can put that was, a and lineup, yeah. that was a beastly lineup. That was a beastly lineup for us, bro. He made a hundred shots out of 239 attempts for threes. Mm. So I expect that to be sick up there as well. Cause he also did something sim- like reducing the sample size. He was keeping up the same percentages while in Philadelphia. I expect him to keep, to have his spot bearing any injury. And if any injury comes along and someone is playing above his level, then maybe that's where it comes out. Just throw in Deuce McBride because we saw what Deuce McBride did did during summer league. And we saw his defensive intensity. I'm not saying Deuce is going to outright earn it, but if he can translate what he did from summer league, I could see Alec Burks being kind of for it. He's 30 years old. So does he really fit that magical timeline that we talk about? No. And they still brought him back. Uh, when I look at the fact that from the right corner three, he shot 64%. Mm-hmm. You know, from the corner three overall, he was at 37%. That's a big number in Tibbs' system is those guys that have the ability to shoot the corner three. And when you look at currently, who would you say is our best defender at that wing position? I mean, Burks to me is a better defender than Fournier. Is it RJ now? It's RJ. I think don't it's RJ. have... You know what I mean? So, yeah, but but Burks is still a solid defender. He's not a great defender. I would say RJ is a better defender yeah. as well. Um, but what I'm saying is Burks, for what we have now, and you look at potential lineups in the fourth quarter, don't be surprised if Burks is in there somehow. Yeah, that clutch, <laughs> clutch lineup. He has to he has to be available, but I think he's going to he's going to be in the conversation for for, you know, 20, 25 minutes again. And I expect him to give you the same percentages from three. I expect him to be at 38 to 40 percent. And, you know, hey, uh, depending on how that lineup is off the bench, he may be another featured guy 
um, you know, with Rose and quickly, yeah. depending on how, how, how the game goes. I think when we see these players, Tibbs has a lot of weapons to kind of manage the game. Whoever's hot that night, that's who he's probably going to go with. But I think I think I think Burks will have a good season and, and very uh, professional. You know, stays under the radar and, and just gets buckets. That, that's what For I sure. like about Burks, man. Um, again, interesting because I'm with you guys, and that injury could play a factor in it. You know, he he does get those ticky tack injuries. Had COVID last year, that could be in play. You knock on wood. You hope not, but you know anything is possible when these guys are traveling and playing an 82 game season. So. Does that make room for McBride and Grimes to, to get their playing time? I also wonder if his minutes stay the same based on potential load management with Kemba and Rose, and does Tibbs rely on him as the primary ball handler off the bench when one of those guys can go, or you know if both of those guys aren't available? Because we, we saw that Burks was the, the emergency point guard last year. Um, and, and we always question whether or not, you know, IQ should have that that role or is he better suited uh, off the ball and where, where his primary responsibility will be to shoot. So I think that'll be interesting. But I think Fournier's role and addition here could impact um, Burks' numbers in that Burks was – a lot of times Burks was brought in in place of Bullock to yeah. be – a more dynamic playmaker and shot creator, especially later on in games. Sometimes for RJ, remember those those Miami games when he had RJ out, uh, Tibbs took RJ out of the fourth quarter, he had Burks in there. So I'm wondering, with Fournier here, does that cut Burks' minutes a little bit? Because now you have a reliable shot creator, a reliable playmaker, and, and the guy that you just paid, <laughs> you know, four years, uh, whatever you gave him. To be your your starting uh to a, your, your starting wing, 